All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Christ the Lord became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought and word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We pray you of your mercy, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. And now the collect for this Good Friday. O holy and immortal one, hear us as we pray through Jesus, our high priest. Heal all our divisions. Reconcile all who are estranged. Console all who suffer. And finally, raise up to new life all that is bound by death. Amen. And now listen to a reading from the Gospel according to St. Mark. Now, at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now, a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels. He had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. And then he answered them, do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priest had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, crucify him. Pilate asked them, why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole cohort. They clothed him in a purple cloak and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him, hail king of the Jews. They struck his head with a reed, they spat on him. They knelt down in homage to him. And finally, after mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. And then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene the father of Alexander and Rufus. And then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him. And they divided his clothes among them casting lots to decide what each should take. 
it was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. And with him, they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking themselves and saying he saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, he's calling for Elijah. Someone ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink, saying, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. And then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now, when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, truly, this man was God's son. This is the word of the Lord. Eli, Eli, Lama Sabachthani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Of all of the words Jesus spoke throughout his life, of all of the words that Jesus spoke on the cross, these are the most difficult, the most painful to hear. They come from a place of physical agony, of emotional isolation. That's what crucifixion does. Crucifixion was an ugly, twisted form of execution that was born in the slums of the human mind. Before the crucifixion, the victim would be taken out and flogged with a scourge. That doesn't sound all that bad until you think that a scourge was bits of leather with metal and glass embedded in it. And the victim would be flogged until the skin on his back hung in strips like ribbon and the blood at his feet was drenched with blood. And, and, and then the victim's arms would be tied to an upright beam that he would carry to his place of execution. Once there, once there, they would nail the hands to the cross, strip the victim naked, and lift 
the crossbeam up and jar it into place and nail his feet on the upright pole and there the victim would hang. Naked. Exposed to the elements. Exposed to the taunts and the jeers of a bloodthirsty crowd. It was at this moment for Jesus, as one by one, his friends abandoned him, as the taunts of the crowd became white noise, as his vision blurred, as he felt abandoned with no hope nothing but white, hot, searing pain. At that moment, he cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And and, and this was a moment of ultimate abandonment for Jesus. Think about it. This was the Jesus who taught his disciples to pray saying, Abba, a childhood term of endearment, rather like daddy. But at this moment, he did not say Abba. He did not say the more formal name, Father. No, simply, my God, my God. What what was lost here was more than a word. It was a relationship. I think we know something of these moments, you and I. I think we know something of these moments when our hearts ache, when our eyes begin to fill with tears, when nothing makes any sense. Those are the moments when everything that comes to our mind begins with the word, why? Why did I lose my job? Why is death and destruction and suffering stalking our planet? Why is there so much pain all around us? Why is God allowing this to happen? Why did my daughter have to die? My God, my God, why? Why? As we confront these words of abandonment, both ours and his, I believe if we listen closely, very closely, we will hear the voice of Jesus reaching out over the precipice of time. And as we listen to his cry, I believe we begin to know and understand that our God Our God understands our terror, our pain, our fear, because his son lived it. He lived it for you. He lived it for me. He lived it for all humanity. Ernest Gordon, in his book, beyond the River Kwai, talks about his experience in a prisoner of war camp. And he said something that I found fascinating and incredibly moving. He said that for he and his fellow prisoners, it was the image of crucifixion 
the image of Jesus on a cross that helped them maintain their faith and that gave them hope. He said a God that was indifferent to human suffering was of no help, was of no interest to them. But the crucified Jesus, the Jesus who hung on a cross and suffered for humanity, he spoke a different word. Gordon said it was if it was God himself speaking to them and saying, you can do what you can to me. You can break my bones. You can bruise my body. You can drain my blood, but you cannot stop me from being who I am. I am the one who loves you. And I will never let you go. This day, this Good Friday, as we confront the poignancy, the power, the drama of our Lord hanging on a cross and breathing his last breath, somehow, somehow speaks to us and says that because Jesus suffered betrayal, because he knew pain, because he knew shame and abandonment, we know and we understand that our God is not the God of stained glass windows, of pristine churches and chapels. Our God is the God of emergency rooms with ventilators and masks. Our God is the God of accident scenes and crime scenes. Our God is the God of broken families, broken hearts, of shattered dreams. In our darkest and most difficult moments, we need to listen deep, deep down in the core of our being. And I believe we will hear the words of Jesus saying, I love you. I will never, ever let you go. And so now I invite you to be quiet, be very, very quiet, and bring to this sacred moment, the pain and heartache of our world in whatever is going on in your heart, in your mind, in your spirit, bring it here and allow yourself to be held in the arms of the one who will never let you go. Not now, not ever. You are mine and I love you. Amen.
This is the wood of the cross on which hung the Savior of the world. Come, let us worship. Nothing to you, all you who pass by. Look and see if there was any sorrow like my sorrow, which was brought upon me, which the Lord inflicted on the day of his fierce anger. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal one, have mercy upon us. O oh, my people, O oh, my church, what have I done to you? Or in what have I offended you? Testify against me. I led you forth from the land of Egypt and delivered you by the waters of baptism, but you have prepared a cross for your Savior. Holy God, holy and mighty, Holy and immortal one, have mercy upon us. I led you through the desert 40 years and fed you with manna. I brought you through tribulation and penitence and gave you my body, the bread of heaven. But you have prepared a cross for your Savior. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal one, have mercy upon me. What more could I have done for you that I have not done? I planted you my chosen and fairest vineyard. I made you the branches of my vine, but when I was thirsty, you gave me vinegar to drink and pierced my side 
with the spear. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal one, have mercy upon us. I went before you in a pillar of cloud and you have led me to the judgment hall of Pilate. I scourged your enemies and brought you to a land of freedom, but you have scourged, mocked, and beaten me. I gave you the water of salvation from the rock, but you have given me gall and left me to thirst. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal one, have mercy upon us. I gave you a royal scepter and bestowed the keys of the kingdom, but you have given me a crown of thorns. I raised you on high with great power, but you have hanged me on the cross. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal one, have mercy upon us. My peace I gave, which the world cannot give, and wash your feet as a sign of my love. But you draw the sword to strike in my name and seek high places in my kingdom. I offered you my body and blood, but you scatter and deny and abandon me. Holy God, holy, mighty, holy and immortal one, have mercy upon us. I sent the spirit of truth to guide you as you close your hearts to the counselor. I pray that all may be as one in the Father and me, but you continue to quarrel and divide. I call you to go and bring forth fruit, but you cast lots for my clothing. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal one, have mercy upon us. I grafted you into the tree of my chosen Israel, and you turned on them with persecution and mass murder. I made you joint heirs with them of my covenants, but you made them scapegoats for your own guilt. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal one, have mercy upon us. I came to you as the least of your brothers and sisters. I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me, naked and you did not clothe me, sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal one, have mercy upon us. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, we pray you to set your passion, cross and death between your judgment and our souls, now and in the hour of our death. Give mercy and grace to the living. Pardon and rest to the dead. To your holy church, peace and concord, and to us sinners, everlasting life and glory. For with the Father and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now. Send down your abundant blessing, Lord, upon your people, 
who have devoutly recalled the death of your son in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection. Grant them pardon. Bring them comfort. May their faith grow stronger and their eternal salvation be assured. We ask this through Christ the Lord.